Okay, welcome to the Low Button Podcast. We have Tito on again. We talk about swimming, poker, Gorlack the Destroyer. She's a, a, a big bitch. The roast battle, Mexico, Siegfried and Royd never got to have sex with each other. Okay, Lobo Den. For me is Tito from episode 1440, 93, and 139 of the Lobo Dan Podcast, and he's back today. You are the first time at this studio with, with Justin. Yeah, you didn't go to you didn't get to meet Christine at Lincoln Lodge, but um, welcome back. What up, boss? What's up, boss? Is this a record? Is this huh? what like number five? Is this a record? I think Am you, I leading. I gotta see because it's a you or Johnson because Weaver's out. It's your Brian, one of you two, uh, Pussy okay. Booty Brian, uh, Bipolar Brian Johnson. Cool, 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 cool. Who can't pay his rent right now? Well, hey. It's a hard world out there. Yeah, because he can he can only make so much money because of his disability. But anyways, uh, Tito, welcome. How you feeling? You you not the best today or what? Like how I felt earlier. I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good. Right, I'm a little tired. I got I was drinking earlier today uh, in celebration. In celebration uh, of what? Uh, I went to uh, my girl. <laughs> uh, I have a girlfriend, and her uh, tia passed away. And, That's uh, aunt to the white yeah. people. And so we uh, yesterday we went to the wake. Today we went to the funeral, and then. Um, there was uh we went to Maggiano's, and it hey, was, it's a chain. It's, it's kind of like an open bar. So I had like a glass of wine, a Bloody Mary, uh, and then another glass of wine. I like Maggiano's. I like you know I've, Maggiano's. I, I like I like some of the chains. You know what I mean? It's super Italian, local. but it's serviced by Mexicans. It's great. That's like any place you yeah, go to. Yeah, yeah, Chinese. Yeah. No, um, no, I loved it. It was very good food. It was like for buffet style. It was pretty good. Oh, they did the fa- they do the family style, right? Yeah, they just bring out the massive plates and whatever. I didn't touch some of the stuff. I mean, like I thought it was a little overboard, like lasagna plus uh, pork loin plus uh, chicken plus salad. You're like, you're just pick two. You know what I'm saying? Pick two. That's it. I went to Olive Garden the other day. I had a gift card. Usually, I wouldn't go to Olive Garden, but I hey, went to when you're there, family. Though, yeah, you know yeah. Well, it, my fucking meal sucked, but it was uh, Jessica's thing was good. But I went to Olive Garden. It's not bad. I just whatever. It was free. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, no, I would not go to Olive Garden. So I went to that, got a little toasty, and then came home. Been writing jokes. And now I'm here. Uh, Tito, you're the champion, the roast battle champion. I am the, uh, the, or the what tournament. The tournament champion. The there's tournament another champion. champion. Yeah, there's the 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 like champion champion, the one who wears the belt. How did and they get that belt? Oh, that's fucking Jessica Misra. Well, because uh, I believe uh, Grace Leishman uh, won the tournament, became the champion that way, and then she defended her title a number of times, and then she faced uh, Jessica Misra. Misra won, and then so you won the tournament. If you won the tournament, you get a title shot with Misra. And so that means uh, June 17th at the Lincoln Lodge at Roast Battle on a Thursday, I will be uh, taking on Jessica Misra. Oh, you and Misra go at each other. Yeah, she beat me. She molly whopped me uh, the first time we met. But the first time we met, this is not an excuse, but the first time we met, I was a very, it was a very bad day for me. Uh, I had some things. Go, go. Did you go to a funeral that day or something? No, it's funny. I didn't <laughs> go to a funeral. I had, a, uh, so I run like this Airbnb in Mexico City. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, we had somebody that brought bed bugs because we bought new mattresses those, yeah. and everything, but we rented it out through Airbnb and someone brought bed bugs. And then that day I got a text from the family that was staying, but they sent me pictures of their kids bitten up. <laughs> and this was around two thirty right, in the afternoon. Kids, uh, white kids or Mexican? No, these are Mexican families that are traveling to Mexico okay. City and then found. But anyways, long story. They were they were they were very nice because okay. if they were white, if they were like it's American, over. it's done. It's over. It's a done deal. Yeah, I was but say. Mexicans are just so much easier to work with. Uh, in terms of their patience and understanding of like things go wrong, shit happens, plates break, and so on. So they sent me uh, that, boy, these white people don't got that these pictures at two thirty in the afternoon. The roast battle is at like eight or nine, and I have be and I was walking into the gym, so my plan was like to kill two hours, and then I still hadn't written or finished any of my jokes. But anyways, I get this news, and then all like my panic buttons were going off because I had to like find a solution find a replacement, find a Terminator, and find, like, how to handle Airbnb complaints and, like, do all of this before the battle. So I com- completely put the battle to the side. And I did manage to find – it's funny because I'm in Mexico, on Craigslist, uh, not Craigslist, on Facebook, everybody sells everything. 
Everybody sells everything. If you go to Marketplace in Mexico City, someone will sell you the fucking screw Kidneys. for your fucking like uh, faucet. It doesn't matter. It's so fucking awesome. I found someone that sold uh, mattresses. I found another dude that sold frames. And I found a guy to throw away the mattresses. Oh, dude, all within like a four-hour span. But I had to like figure out how to pay them. So I'm over here. And Zell, I gotta send them. Mon- no, I gotta send them through Western Union. Oh yeah, Mexicans. It's a whole. It's so, but like, so like, I had all that to do, and then I went to face Mizra with like half written jokes, and I got eaten a lot. Yeah, I think I remember seeing that. I think I watched it before we did. I ours. got eaten. A- I wanted to bury my head in the fucking sand, and I might. It might happen again. Who knows? She's fucking amazing. Uh, but I'm. I'm gonna be a little bit more. You gotta prepare prepare it right ahead. I'm a little bit more. Yeah, she writes. She prepares. She's brilliant. She's brilliant. Word economy, just punches, just uh, the ho- she's brilliant. Yeah, the yeah the first one uh, I did with Gabe, man, I got fucking it was bad. I haven't didn't roast in years. Yeah, you they- fucking swung at me, you bitch. <laughs> you <laughs> you took some hard swings, bro. I was I was also kind of half assed now when I was you like, were not in a I good had place. to I had to go to Mexico in you a few days. It, so I had like a three month trip that I needed to plan. I had room. I had a uh, uh, rooms that were empty that I needed to rent. I had an issue with some other shit, and I was just like, man, there is so many moving parts right now. The last thing I need to do is focus on Giovanni. <laughs> That's too much. But I, I written enough where I was like, if I can if I can land four of these seven jokes, you have I'm like, one I think, really good joke that fucking oh, sure the, hit. I forget, uh, the debit card one? Something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're only a father because your credit card got declined. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I think that won him the roast because that hit, and I didn't. Get it at yeah, first. You so I looked like, stupid on stage because I was like, what? "I was like, what does that mean?" And I was like, uh, "And I got it afterwards." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And I kind of like. I also like the. Uh, uh, you look like you give out cocaine at a quinceanera, and then you're like, "Here, you're a woman now." <laughs> oh, that's funny. Dude. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, that one was good. That was very no. We had a good battle. Um, but yeah, that day was also say. So that's the thing is like I have so many moving parts outside of just comedy that. If they coincide, it could be a very bad day for me. Yeah, it's it different. Be I, but yeah, it's different for for like a regular show because you got your set, you got your fucking, you can go to your set. Yeah. Or your fucking, they're tried and true. Like, yeah, yeah. You know how to pull yourself out of a fucking situation if you can. But um, but the good news is, uh, because I pre- performed, I and I won, and it was in front of Brian Moses, uh, who was the who was host the, of who's the original the host of the whole thing, on Comedy yeah, yeah. Central, the whole nine. He's black. He was uh, he was the the winning vote for me uh, in overtime. It was amazing. He called for the overtime. No, it was a brilliant thing. But anyway, long story short, I am uh, was asked to perform uh, at the Comedy Mothership Memorial Day weekend. Oh, in Austin, in motherfucker, Austin. dude! Congratulations. I'm, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, so I will be facing. Uh, I'm not even gonna name his ass. Uh, I'm not even gonna fucking give you any cred, but I'll be facing uh, this dude at the That's mothership on Sunday night, the 28th. You fuck, you don't you don't watch UFC, do you? Huh? You watch UFC at all? No. Not a guy, not he, really. Because that's what Izzy. He's he was a cha- he's the one eighty five champ. He was there was some South African. He's like I'm not even gonna mention his name. I'm not even gonna yeah. give him any because he was talking about who's he's a white dude and he's like I'm the real African and he was white oh. and he was like fuck black on black crap. <laughs> yeah and he was black like, on black crap. oh yeah and he was oh fuck so you feeling so how's comedy going regular jokes and comedy ah. Uh, I just had a very good set at McHenry at the Vixen. Shout out to Stephanie what, Robinson. Is that a new spot? I popped yes. up on my Facebook. It looks yes. like it's popping. Yes. If you're on the Burbs, I say check out the Vixen. I believe it's on Tuesdays or Wednesdays every uh, every week or Stephanie Robinson. Either way, uh, it was a really good room. It's a huge audience. You get a like really big stage, great lighting. Justin was there. Uh, and I believe that that clip... Uh, you, you, we were able to plug into the board? <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay, good. That's all that matters. It's, it's actually on this machine down here. Nice. Because okay. other, other clips where you can't plug in the board, it sounds like it's trash. Uh, Technical yeah, yeah. talk. I got a lot of I got a lot of clips I don't like, but that I just filmed that, and I feel pretty good. I'm not trying to get as many shows as I can right now. I got three battles coming up. One of t- all three of them are very important. Uh, what, what are the one? Give me the names you want to name. Uh, can name the yeah the Austin the Mothership one. He's not gonna be named. Uh, here in the suburbs on June. Oh, you doing the Aurora one? Yeah, 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 I'm doing the Aurora with Chris Bognat. Bognat. Oh, the little Asian looking dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. He and got cheated on, and he oh. took his girlfriend back. I'm just just letting you know. Thank you. So if you, if you want. Wow. Uh, just information what a, about him. What a cuck. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know if he's still with her or not. He's a cuckapino. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's a cuckapino. Because he's half he's part Filipino. That's perfect. He's a cuckapino. <laughs> I didn't know they made those, Shout bro. Out to Chris. He's a nice guy, but. And then on the gotta... 17th, I got Mizra. So I got three battles, but I kind of like that they're stacked because I need to get in a rhythm. I don't mind uh, taking L's in either or, right? Like if you're talking win or losses, I want to perform great, but I want to be ready for Mizra. Because I f one, I wanna I wanna try to take the belt, and two, I wanna defend my fucking shit. Because if you look up our clip, we're not gonna do it. No. If you look it up online, me versus Mitch, she, she f fucking dog walks me, dude. You know what I'm saying? She fucking yeah. took me to the street, saw. It was embarrassing, bro. But I learned. I learned. Yeah, she from treated then on, like you were like her gardener, and you're like <laughs> fired you. Bro, she had this. She had this joke. She's like, Tito's the type of guy that you save uh, on your phone with like an adjective, like Tito. Bus. <laughs> <laughs> it's an uh, adverb or ad whatever. I forget what it was, but it was such a brilliant fucking joke that I, there was just no coming. There was no coming back from that. And I went, I went after her like up top with like a little too crudish. I, it wasn't even a joke I wanted to do. I just thought it was funny. And it just really backfired, and the rest of that battle just went down. Do you remember what you told Yeah, me? it was kind of like a slut shamey joke. You know, she looked... Uh, fucking comics or something? Or like she's, on shows? It was something about opening up for other comics as where I've just uh, told jokes before them. And uh, it, Oh, like opening uh, yeah, too much It of was a such a bad take because I didn't, I didn't really want to do that because I was like, I don't really like... She's got a boyfriend and all that, and I was like, I don't think she's this engaged. Is. And so the thing is, I also didn't say it with conviction too. So it was like, if you don't believe it, yeah, 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 yeah like yeah. in a regular set, if you don't believe it, yeah, it was like, a terrible, it was a terrible, terrible, terrible misjudgment on my part. And then, and well, everybody, uh, I saw it on Facebook, so what? not Facebook, on the YouTube, and it's how's TikTok? Do you guys get more comments on that? Uh, TikTok is just fine. TikTok fucking hates me. Yeah. When it when it I comes to the in. clips that I'm on for the roast battle, what do they say about you? They fucking <laughs> hate me, dude. It's so the, they say so much shit. They're like, he's such a tryhard. What's with the gloves? Oh, the gloves. They fuck because you know I wear the fingerless gloves yeah. just because I think they're dope. I don't know. I was gonna ask you why the gloves. I never even asked you about the gloves. Oh, I the never gloves, thought about it. How did the it gloves start? were? I was uh, driving Comic books. No, I was driving for 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 Lyft for a while, and mm -hmm. uh, I would wear gloves because my hands would slip on the wheel. And so so I it was just, a practical reason for So it me. was a very practical reason. And then I, I uh, would ride bikes to Mike's at night, and I would just leave the gloves on. And then I didn't want to take them off because my hands were cozy. Uh -huh. And so now, like, I actually at the McHenry one that Justin was at, I actually wore the gloves. And uh, people were like, oh, you're bringing the gloves back. I'm like, <laughs> I want to see what it does. <laughs> and then I fucking rocked it, bro. You know, my, well, my stu did I tell you my stupid ass when we did our roast? I took uh, this. I feel uh, disgusted by this. I you took should. my fanny pack off. What? Before our fucking roast battle, right? Oh, because I was I was trying to be. I like, had nothing for a fanny pack. Good, but I, I had, had nothing. There. But if you did, I didn't want to take that away from you now. But in the moment, I was trying to do some forty chest, and it was like that's not me. It's like I wear a fucking fanny pack. Yeah. I do this. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. If you yeah, have a joke yeah. about it, so I never did that again. I was like, because uh, it's like I did it on some I, weird I, strategy bullshit. I disgusted myself by it. I'll never I do something like that again. Purposely didn't wear my gloves or like have my hair out too much during the tournament because I was like, I'm trying to win. You know what I'm saying? Like I was okay. looking for edges. But when I faced like Brandon Kiefer, he was like, do the whole thing. And I was like, oh, I'm doing the whole thing. <laughs> I'm going, I'm coming with my hair pulled back. I'm coming with some spooky shirt, my gloves and my rings. And it and made black for, heart. You have a black heart. Yeah, I always have my black heart. And I'm where's, like, where's the black heart from? Is there significance to it? or Yeah, just, well, I mean... Uh, kind of, because you you matter. have a black heart. For a while there was yeah, a black heart. Yeah. Well, for your so you're not anymore. No, nah, I used to like write poems and shit, and I, my pen name was Blackheart. Oh, I thought it was you were just a cold hearted motherfucker. No, nah, it was in the past. It was just when I was like a little bitter at at life. But now I just keep it because it looks fucking dope. But yeah, it's Blackheart. Oh, uh, I wrote down nine eleven story. Do you know why? Do you have some 9-11 story? I don't know where. Yeah, I had like a little video go viral that I told at uh, Laughter Hours. Uh, it was a story of, of, of my 9-11 story, which is, is basically because we had a comic um, before the, I went up who was from New York and he had some 9-11 stuff. And he's uh, Muslim, I believe. And so he was he was very funny. I'm sorry on the name. I'm spacing, but he Camilla was very comedian. funny. And then that triggered a memory for me. And I was like, I think this is kind of funny. So I go up there and I'm like, you guys want to hear a stupid 9-11 story? So 9-11 happened. I was in the library. The rest of the classes were canceled, but we still had to like move from room to room, from room, to room. And I remember uh, after 
uh, what happened, I went to uh, my physics class. And uh, in order to kill time, the physics professor uh, brought out Jenga. And he made oh, the, the black. The, yeah. <laughs> so he made us play Jenga on 9-11, which I thought Never was tactful. hilarious. <laughs> I was like, dude, we, this is traumatic. If he had two like, Jengas, that'd be perfect. Because you so, got twin Jengas. <clears throat> so I remember they built the Jenga, the, the first tower. And uh, I was waiting for it. I was like, how does no one see this, right? Like, you know what I'm like? How is no one else? Pr- I'm like moving around like a kid in a candy store. I'm like, yeah, this is going to be great. You got your black like a plane. <laughs> <laughs> and it fucking it topples over and it falls down and I'm like ah not again <laughs> Bin Laden or whatever <laughs> Bin Laden and they fucking got so mad dude they were like oh, dude they were like fucking t- they're like dude that's fucking not funny dude are you are you fucking serious right now soon. and I was soon. like I was like it's funny <laughs> it's funny for all we know this is a setup <laughs> for all we know this is not us uh, whatever. So. But remember 9 11? Remember, you remember, did you get all patriotic after or no? No. My dad never. did. You're the, you the only person? What about your Not family? Not the only person. I just didn't give a fuck. For those two weeks, dude, my dad had a little American I was, flag. I was a little nervous. I was like, oh. Are we getting attacked? Like, what's going to happen here? Yeah, but yeah. in terms of like, so I had one friend uh, whose dad was a uh, captain in the police force. All my friends, I went to a private all boys school. A lot of my friends, their dads were cops. Mm-hmm. So all these motherfuckers was bananas i'm talking riding their bikes around the neighborhood wearing like with the american flag and shit yeah, everywhere like dude. doing that and i'm like who do you, you remember that, that, who, who are you preaching you who are you preaching to what choir you're like you're in a polish neighborhood dude <laughs> like, you know what i'm saying so i never got paid job i thought it was cool that like everybody chilled the fuck out for two a while. weeks it was like everybody was everybody like was team. nice Crazy. and you saw videos of like people giving uh the fire department food they had so much food that the firemen had to say no to people and i'm like you're not gonna you're not gonna heal the world by giving them more crispy treats crispy you know? creams yeah or whatever it was i'm like this is weird because i'm mexican and like I was raised in a very Mexican household. My mom's Puerto Rican, and then that infiltrated my life when I was, like, 11, 12. And so for a long time, I had, like, this detachment to America. Like, I was here, but I was like, I'm not really involved here. You know, I don't pay taxes here. I just go to school here, but the summers were my cousins in Mexico. So, like, I had oh, I, I was had like a that very with, limited with, with connection. LA. I I had, summers in Los Angeles. Yeah, I had a very limited connection to the concept of America. Like we we that's, didn't really do Fourth of July shit because I was in Mexico. That's what me in Wisconsin. I live in Wisconsin, but I'm not from Wisconsin. I I like this is what I say is like I spend the night there with my son and girlfriend. Yeah, but but I love I, America now. I fuck with it. Yeah, it's fine. I'm here, like, dude. oh, this 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 motherfucker's kind of raw. <laughs> it's you know what I'm saying. Like, as long as you have a little ambition, you should play. If, if you want a good, easy life, uh, it's not gonna be great for you. My buddy has a Lamborghini now. Fuck him. Who well, cares? No, 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 no. But hold on, hold on, friend. I'm gonna beat his ass. Take his Lamborghini. No, no. Mother immigrant lived in the shitty oh, section. Yeah, oh, yeah. All you had to say was immigrant. So say, in Polak. Say, yeah, immigrant. Say less, say less. Got stuck. He lived in the uh, where my mom lived. These section eight apartments. Yeah. That he drives by every week. He's like, dude. I look at it every week. This is where I came from. And he like, fucking did it. You know, built it, whatever type of shit. <laughs> I went to this uh, real estate convention back in the day when I used to try to like do real estate and shit. And there was this like Nigerian dude that told his story of like coming to the U.S. when he was like 17, 18. And uh, he went to like Minnesota. And then uh, one of the first places he went to uh, was the Mall of America. They <laughs> he's got like, a, they got he's a like, oh my, he's like, oh my God, this is the Mall of All America. <laughs> <laughs> And then he goes to the Mall of America and then he sees all the stores and he's like, am I in heaven? This is crazy. And then he sees a fountain. He sees a fountain. He's like, oh, my God, they have water just running everywhere. (laughs) And then he gets close to the fountain. He sees all the money. He's like, oh, my God, they're just throwing money. (laughs) And then he was like, that's when I knew I was in the place that I wanted to be. And he ended up owning like 10 or 15 grocery stores using government funds and programs to just open grocery stores throughout like Minnesota. Cause there's somebody has that joke where they're like, uh, uh, they use, uh, I know it's in, I thought like they use toilet. We have toilet water or something like that. Uh, I don't know about that. No, no, I I fucked that one up. But all I'm saying is that the older you get, the more you kind of appreciate shit. Cause listen, I love Mexico. Don't get me wrong. I was just in Mexico. I was in Mexico for like three, four months, uh, recently. And I, uh, uh, How is Mexico now? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. 
it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Listen, if as you long as you're not close to the border, if you don't want to go and you're like afraid of it, don't then don't go. You know what I'm saying? Like we don't need people like you. Uh, but if you want a good time and have fun, it's a good time. Have fun. People ask me, is Mexico dangerous? I'm like, is Chicago dangerous? And they're like, well, yes and no. And you know what I'm saying? It's like, is Mexico dangerous? Well, yes and no. Um, but I ended up getting uh, caught by the cops uh, drinking on the street. How much you pay them? Man, all right. So um, that happens also in Honduras. I, I paid them $200 because they also f- found a, a maybe what could have been possibly a bag of blow. Maybe could have possibly allegedly. been empty. Yeah, allegedly. Uh, and so they shook me down. It was two of them. I paid 100 each. Um, and it's part of one of the bits that I'm doing right now. Um, you can't do that in America. <laughs> it's funny because it's the uh, in, in the bit is just like in America, uh, people get mad at the cops because they discriminate. Uh, in Mexico, people are mad at the cops because they fucking don't. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody gets shaken the fuck down. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it doesn't matter. My they, uh, uh, police one time. My my Theo was really drunk. This is back in the '80s. My Theo was really drunk and left the bar. A, DUI, a drunk driver is just a fucking like tr- a cash register. Well, no, he was just he was walking, and uh, the cops stopped him for being drunk in public, and they tried to shake him down. He had no money, so they beat him. To the point of trying to kill him and then threw him over a bridge. Damn. And he uh, he just <laughs> hit the fucking grass rocks or whatever. And just like we found him in a hospital like three days later because he was missing. I remember my Thea being super fucking concerned. And then we find out that it was the cops and they couldn't get any money off him. So they just tried to kill him. And How'd your uncle feel <laughs> after that? He, w- we were happy he was back. He, he was like, did he have some retribution he wanted? Like, nah, he, he was a Christian dude. He was a very, um, he was a good husband, family man, and he just kind of like forgave took him. Took the L type of thing. Kind of just like you know, it, it is what it is. It's Mexico, it's the cops. He's just like, one, I shouldn't be that drunk. You know what I'm, you know what okay. I'm saying? Like, I think that was like, I shouldn't probably be on the streets that drunk that late, whatever. Um, but he's still with us. He's great. I love Mateo Arturo. Not rest in peace, <clears throat> to Mateo Arturo. Uh, cocaine, right? So I haven't done, allegedly I haven't done cocaine, I think like in two years. That statement would have been true. Up until Monday, I did cocaine, allegedly, uh, on Monday. It was my birthday. Hey, you can see that. Yeah, gracias. It was my birthday, and my friend afterwards, I was like, just was like, you mind if I do a little cocaine? She's like, go ahead, allegedly, right? I have a full-time job, so I use that. So what my friend did is like, you I'm know allegedly what? loving the story. Yeah. So then what <laughs> my friend did, I was like, look, he's like, you know what? We'll get it. Uh-huh. We'll get the coke, but you have a kid now. I don't want you fucking things up. I'm yeah. gonna do it first. Yeah, we're gonna wait five minutes. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. If you yeah. don't die, if I don't die, then I'll give you the. Cocaine. That would be terrible. Yeah, so then I'm waiting, waiting. But he's a kid too, and I was like, well, if you die, I'm gonna help fucking with your kid, obviously for you doing this. He's like, ah. so he did it, and I was like, all right, give it to me. And he's like, has it been? Fi-? He's like, because I have a timer. He's like, let me see the fucking. T-. No, so yeah. it's four. So I waited the other minute. And yeah, because that matters. <laughs> <laughs> you could buy testing strips like a normal fucking human. But instead, you're like, I'm going to do the bump first. We're going to give it an arbitrary if, number of minutes. If you don't die. <laughs> and if you don't die, we're all going to do it. And then in, t- in 20 hours or whatever, you're both dead. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Where do you get these testing strips? Can you get them anywhere? Apparently, you can get them on Amazon. And but you, you can't can get, get them at Walgreens? I don't know if they do it anymore. I feel like they don't. They don't want to, like, you know, support. Them. But if you're going to do it anyways, shouldn't you just, like... Because testing and, strips aren't illegal. I know that, like, I, I I have a lot of friends that do a lot of different drugs, and every single one of them I trust because they all test. They all test. They all test. Yeah, that's a problem. Like. I mean, you just can't risk it anymore. I mean, you really, like, you, listen, we're all, we all want a good time. We're all adults. We all know how to do it. Right? TikTok and fentanyl, right? That's the way China's trying to get at us. <laughs> If you're conspiracy, I'm, honestly, related. like honestly, China's got uh, something uh, going. <laughs> China f- understands us better than we do. They do, dude. They do. Like, they we understand us better. Like, we don't need do. tanks. We don't need missiles. Fucking no. TikTok and fentanyl. Yeah, 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 yeah. TikTok fentanyl, and it's funny because honestly, like life is so stupid in the states that fent- fentanyl makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> that heroin makes sense. You just want, like, if you think about it, had you not taken the roads you've taken, imagine being in this position, right? You're, like, 40 years old. You got three kids. You're divorced. You got a mortgage payment. You don't even live there. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to, like, support yourself through whatever career. Any idea you had of being yourself as a human is over. And then you just got to, like, live with that bitterness and, and frustration, you know? And so what am I talking about? So um, that reminds me of this uh, old white dude. He wasn't that old. Let's say he's, let's say he's 53. 
But he was at the fuck. So Monday went to went back home. Went to some bar. Yeah. Some fucking whatever bar back back in Kenosha. Kenosha. Illinois. Kenosha, right? And we're there, and there's this old that guy. You know, he has the button up shirt. It's tucked in. He, sh- yeah. he looks like he makes a little bit of money, but he's, he's got a brown shit. leather belt. Yeah, uh, exactly. he's got he's got Levi 401 jeans. And he's on this. I'm trying to save the bartender thing. And it, was, yeah. I, it was annoying. The sh- I wanted to hit. I'm not a violent person. What was he doing? He was trying to say I'm the older dude. Who, I'm trying to save the bartender, the younger bartender. Oh, like, he's hitting on the bartender. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, OK. OK. But, it, you know, not in a, not in a really nice, suave way, in a fucking gross, your stupid ass kind of like you're making me cringe. I was cringing, dude. Yeah, and it's yeah, hard yeah. for me to fucking cringe. Yeah. I see some fucking fucked up ass things. And it's like, that's eh, kind of funny. But in this case, it's like and she's <sighs> was he hammered, though? Was no, he hammered? No, he was just no. spitting game. If he was hammered, I think it's OK. Oh, uh, he's, You know what? But I kind of like this sneaky. guy. <laughs> 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 he was just, hey, baby, if you want it, you can get it. <laughs> if not, he's bye. Like, he's like, oh, yeah, very blah, blah, blah. Or maybe me, because I'm the bartender's annoying me, right? Yeah. And it's like, she's not annoying you, and it's really, or is it because you're just trying to get in? But it was it was a weird spot, I was because he was next to me, and then I was uh, trying to talk to him. And I met a virgin that night, um, and it upset me. So I don't know if, what that Damn. says about me. I don't know what it does, but it does. Well, I, it did, because I was like... I was like, you're a virgin, right? Because I met her, and I was like, uh, for whatever reason, maybe her phone case said some virginity thing, right? Because I found out she was half endurance, so I kind of started making fun of her a little bit. Because <laughs> all my fun, I hate all my Honduran friends, but um, I mean, I love them, but I hate them. And then because they're scummy, but anyways, and I'm like, you're Honduran, and I was like, you're a virgin. I was like, you're Christian. She's like, is there something wrong with that? And I'm like, where Honduras are you from? How old is she so I can feel comfortable with this conversation? I'm gonna say between 23 and 28. Okay, I cool. Can't all tell right, anymore. fine. All right, cool. Uh, fuck. What uh, do you mean? Because you didn't explain that. So I, in my I'm mind, I'm at a bar. Yeah. I'm, who gives a fuck? No, she, oh, like she was. No, oh, like she was young. I hate young. I hate teenagers. I hate kids. I don't want him near me. Like, no, no, I know. I'm enjoying. I'm trying to enjoy I'm like, myself. Where are you? Okay, cool, cool. yeah, yeah. Like I had. There was like two friends. Jessica was like, "Hey, can we invite these two friends over?" And I was like, "Nah, nah. it's my birthday. Like, yeah, if it was yours, I'd be nice because they're whatever. Because we actually were like, "Hey, ask these two people to babysit." And I was like, "Well, wouldn't it be kind of weird if we ask them because we probably should invite them out if they're going out for your birthday?" And I was like. Don't even ask him then. I'm fucking good. Like yeah. it's there's some people like you socialize with in a maybe a political way, but at the end of the day, like I want to just hang out with my regular friends. I don't even drink. go to bars. I don't give a fuck no more. What are you talking about going to a bar? I only I only go to open. I didn't mics. go to a bar. I didn't go to a bar. What I thought that story took place at a bar. It and I ended up at a bar after drinking uh, like okay. a lot of black label. Uh <laughs> But it this started guy. at a place called Canoa, Keegan Seafood, like Mexican langostas. I had a cocktail. I want. I was gonna go eat, but then we got a babysitter. And I was like, "Fuck it, bring the bring the bottle." <sighs> yeah, no, my birthdays are gonna be spent doing shows mm-hmm. until further notice. I worked. I worked. I worked on my birthday, and I was yeah, like, yeah. "Let's go get a drink. Why not?" Yeah. Um, when is your birthday, Tito? July thirteenth. What do you normally do? Nothing. Nothing. I feel that's a fe- well, female thing, right? They, that, they yeah, have, it's kind of female shit. They it, do. It may, okay, you're forty, do something. You're thirty, thirty-five, maybe. But like in in the meantime, between time, it's like uh, all I've ever really done. I remember, I'm just like, I think I've just done mics or shows. Yeah, and it's just my birthday, and I'm like, cool. And someone wants to buy me a shot, I'm like, yay. But it's not like for me. I don't give a fuck. I it's don't really a, give a fuck. It's a, she's like, what do you want to do for your birthday? And I was like, I don't. I didn't decide until like five at work. I was like, you know what? Let's go get some food or something. Fuck it. Yeah, the but only I, thing, I was like, I don't know. If I do go eat, I want some steak. I did play golf that morning, you know. But yeah, I just listen. I don't give a fuck. If you're a dude and you're just like living your life and you have nothing to celebrate, and take advantage of your birthday. But I like, I have a good time a lot. Yeah, you know what I'm I like, yeah, like I enjoy my. I have a lot of friends in comedy outside of comedy in Chicago and other countries, and I travel and I do things. So I'm like, life for my birthday, fun. I don't need it to be anything more it's than what it is. My birthday. Yeah, yeah, I don't do birthday weekend. I appreciate the calls, I appreciate the texts, like and whatever cards if they do, and I'm like, that's that's enough yeah, for me. Like my mom wants to make me some food. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I want to oh, see my mom. Cool. I want to have a phone call. You know, uh, I get voice messages from my family in the WhatsApp group chat, and other than that, I'm. Just I'm fucking Gucci, bro. I don't need any of that shit. Yeah, women have a birthday month. It's because they don't feel appreciated because we don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> or if we do, we don't show it well. I feel like 
<laughs> we should appreciate women more, and that is my stance, and you can clip that. <laughs> like, I, I think I do, but I don't show it a lot. So yeah, I have that's, this conversation. A, that's our problem is our appreciation is just by grunting and just going, oh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Like we don't, you know, my girl, she's great, and she just like she'll do a bunch of shit that she doesn't really have to do. I didn't ask for it, but she's like, I did all these things, and I'm like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, that's fine, dude. She's like, you, do you notice that the laundry is done? And I'm like, it should be, bitch. <laughs> what are you talking about? It should be. What are you talking about? You go paint the garage. <laughs> you know, it's like I'm just playing. She's like, I'm not appreciating. I, 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 I get it. I get that. Appreciate it. And listen, blah. I get it. I get it. So on your birthday. We're going to do some nice shit. I'm going to eat your butthole crispy clean. It's going to be a fucking great night. And then uh, you're going to be mad at me tomorrow about some dumb shit. Have you been to Vegas? A few times, yeah. Do you like Vegas? It I don't like you I've like never it. Been, been to Vegas with just like the homies and shit. Mm-hmm. My sister was uh, in her 20s teaching there. Tantra sister? Yeah, or, okay. Tantra. Uh, she was teaching there. She was at a public school. She was doing Teach for America and then just fell in love with it. What's Teach for America? You go across the you, country? No, you just go to like an impoverished neighborhood and work uh, off like your student loans with a little bit less pay. But you get like it's a balance. And okay. she ended up getting her master's through it. And she ended up staying for like a like almost eight nine years, and so I visited like three two three times, but I did. I went to out. I played poker. We went to a bar. It was fine. And uh, we went to like. Do you enjoy gambling, or you don't go fuck about? I'm it? a poker player. Okay. I'm a poker player. I don't. I don't Do care like for the... blackjack. I don't care for crabs. If I knew how to play crabs, I think it would be a lot of fun. I had this discussion. Isn't it craps? Craps. You're saying crabs. You know what it is. Crabs a STD. Uh, I still play with that. <laughs> but no, I'm a poker guy. I'm a Texas Hold'em guy. I played Omaha. Not a fan of how fast and how much money you can just lose. Which one is Omaha? I know Hold'em. Uh, Omaha is just, uh, it's like got more cards. So the probability of having a, a good hand is really high. So it's high risk, high reward. So you'll play like, what is it, like four hands and then a whole set of cards comes out and then you can trade two. I forget exactly how it goes, but it, the betting is super high, super fast. and, and That's too much. It I'm goes not, too fast. Can you do math in your head good? I'm not. Really. No, no, I don't do any math. Okay. I don't really. I just I look at probability, how I feel about it. And I'm like, well, I got an ace king. If I bet here and this is the flop and there's an ace and someone bets, then I'm going to keep going. If they over bet, then I got to think of the pair or something. It's just a whole thing. I used to like play poker before I had a job to make money. I played in tournaments. I played underground. There was this. Did you ever play with Gabri? He was a buzzing professional. No, I don't know who Gabri David is. Gary, he was a comedian in Chicago. He I used to go Vegas. to this underground place in downtown this, that this Russian dude used to hold, and he had like topless uh, servers and shit. And we would have oh, it in servers. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I was thinking not the really computer topless, racks. But they'd be in bras. It, no, no, but I was thinking the computer servers. But uh, and then it would be like two, two, three tables, and he would rate. Now is it still there? Can we go? No, no, no. I think he he was very smart. He was at a uh, University of Chicago for uh for science for computer science. Smart Russian. Yeah, yeah, you know. And we used to play, and then it, it would be funny because like half the table would be gangsters, GDs, and shit like vice lords. And then on the other side would be like uh like a hedge fund manager. Talking to us about his third wife and his boat and his cancer. It was crazy. It'd be like two, three thousand, four thousand a hand. It was awesome. But I were you in a high stake table then? <clears throat> it was honestly it was one two, but it didn't matter. What's one two mean? One to uh, big small blind, big blind. Okay. And then they would straddle. Straddle means you throw out like a five or a ten to start the betting, but it's blind. You haven't received your cards. You'd be like straddle, and you throw out ten, and that's the new the new number. Was there security? Yeah. Yeah, so Dennis was a wrestler mm-hmm. for uh, the University of Chicago. He was oh. like a nationally ranked wrestler. I saw him uh, put a put a dude in a chokehold and drag him out. It was awesome. It was How'd you awesome. meet Dennis? How'd you get involved? Uh, with we, I went on some fucking uh, shiesty websites back in the day and looked for poker groups, and I found this like like this poker group that met at this. How'd one you get place. started with poker? Huh? How, when did you college? Oh, college. everybody started in college. I think in the early 2000s, if you will. Oh, when it was hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The World Series of Poker. Uh, uh, what's his name? The guy Chris who Money won. Maker. Money Maker. Uh, Phil. Uh, Phil H- Ivy. Phil. Phil uh, Ivy. Hellmuth. Black. Uh, the mouth. I read his book. That was real good. Phil Ivy was at a court case with uh, a casino. I don't know if it was in London or something. Like they didn't want to pay him. So he had to take him to court because he like figured out yeah, some he's, whatever. He's he's a fucking savant. If you look at him play and talk, to, uh, money maker is a dude who kind of came in. Yeah, like, he was yeah. like the no namer that came in and won the World Series of Poker in like two thousand and one, two thousand two, and then that started this whole rush. And uh, I won a lot of tournaments and Deuce college. High. I remember that. Yeah, you, I, I had Deuce High. I had Deuce yeah. High. Uh, you had the the Doyle Brunson, the Ten Deuce. 
that's a good hand if you f- fucking want to play it. <laughs> I never. I would. I look at it. And I'm like, ah, oh, Doyle Brunson, man. I throw it away. <laughs> oh, it Do you play bad. poker, Justin? Justin? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I still play. I kind of fantasize. We actually have a, a group. Uh, the comics you play with any comics or no? Yeah, I play with some of the comics. Yeah. Who's 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 good? Greg Bartuziak. He's very aggressive. He's very good. Um, uh, Joe Fernandez actually. Oh, Joe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, he's Houston very good. Astros. Uh, Paul <laughs> Paul Miller is a wild child. <laughs> oh, Paul. Paul Miller will walk in with uh, two hundred bucks, lose it in thirty minutes, <laughs> and just peace out, bro. <laughs> He would just be like, dude, I can't believe it. We're like, you call everything. Paul, but when he's on one and you think he's bluffing you, he will fuck your ass up. But he's just like high risk, high reward. It fucking, it's crazy. If he's in a hand, I always double check. I'm like, I don't think. Uh, who else is good? Um, what about a poker comic series thing? That'd be kind of fun. We've right? talked about yeah, it. Yeah. We've talked about it. We all know. Oh, Abby's real good. Abby Sanchez? Yeah. Abby's His dad good. was a degenerate gambler. Abby's he lost a lot good. of money. Yeah, never knew. He has a joke, right? He's like, yeah, I didn't know my lights were going to go on or off because his dad was a, a degenerate. Uh, well, Abby's real good. I've never seen him actually lose. I always see him at least double, and that's that's pretty good. Is he conservative? I'm, nah, he honestly, playing? he knows how to play his hand. He knows how to uh, how to trap you, how to bring you in, how to bluff a hand. Um, he's actually pretty, and he's stealthy because you never know when he's serious. That's the thing about Abby. Yeah, he's pretty even He kill. He's super with his, even his, like, his like quick wit quick-witted jokes and comebacks while we're it's all like the shooting the shit it's got the same level so he's kind of one of those hard to read guys so he plays very good um i've had a good few paul runs. doesn't seem like he's hard to read paul miller paul miller <laughs> is, 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 a oh wild is a wild ride if he's in at, if he's in at the end of a hand you just gotta like fucking hold your nose and pray to god you're like i guess i think i have him <laughs> and then he pulls out a full house on you he, and then he'll apologize be like sorry bro so i'm so sorry i am so sorry bro <laughs> I'm so sorry, bro. I'm like I didn't want I didn't want I didn't want to do it to you. I didn't. I just, but I fucking had it, you know. I I had it. <laughs> Polly, love Paul. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a fun time. But yeah, I I I've been to Vegas and actually, um, I was poor. I still kind of poor. But I would go to Vegas with like 100, 150 bucks. I would go play poker, and then I would walk out of the the poker room with like three, four hundred. And then me and my sister had like a night of it. We'd like go on roller coasters and shit and do a bunch of wild shit. It was fun. Did you ever see the two magicians, the gay ones, and then one of them died or got no, attacked by a tiger? Get, he got attacked. Uh, what's it called? You remember? Roy, Siegfried and Siegfried Roy. Siegfried and right? Roy, bro, the gayest non-gay couple <sighs> of all time. A real Siegfried and Roy couple, right? Did there. they? So that was a different era, the nineties. Like now, they were like eighties, nineties, early. 2000s. So you couldn't really be gay, or you could, but some people wouldn't. Listen, whether they are or not, who cares? I just hope they're happy with their fucking cats. Uh, are they still alive? Are they still doing shows? I know one of them. I think one of them died from the injuries. <laughs> oh, can you look up Sieg- Siegfried and Roy? I want to see their outfits, dude. Yeah, Rose Battle. <laughs> Whoa, hold on. Hidden information. Oh yeah, I have. Who am I going? Anthony. <clears throat> June first, and then then I'm doing Bob Keen in July or something like that. Check careful, Bob is a fucking uh-huh. Bob is vicious. Bob is vicious. Oh, let's go to images first. Uh, let me see these motherfuckers. Siegfried died 2013. Damn, did kill him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at his face, bro. He's all sorts of not good. He looks like he's like. Eh. What's one of those things, right? Like NASCAR, you watch it, you want to see the crash, and you finally get to see it. Like, I mean, dude, you're playing with tigers. wild fucking animals. One of you was going to get it. You guys see the video of uh, the bear? There's the lady and the bear. Uh, bear attack, and the guys were in the judo suit, and he tries to chop it. I don't know how to Google this. Maybe bear, uh, let me think, bear attack. Uh, judo, man. Let me try to think. Oh, it was on TV. Let's see. Not competition. It, it was the lady in the kind of the 70s hair. Uh, it was, oh, soon till they make good watches, don't they? Uh, on the that's way. God damn man it. Man beats bear with judo. Or, no, no. How about just a bear attack? Just go to bear attack. Just put in bear attack and then go to videos. <laughs> Like, this has to be in the top ones, dude. It's so entertaining. Remember, uh, I want to see fucking... Are you into... You're not into death, right? You have WhatsApp, and then... All right, I'll put in the links if I fucking find it. But they're in a... He's... 
he's there, the lady's there, and she just attacks the lady because of some food, and the guy's just trying to judo chop the, the bear. And there's nothing, it's a fucking bear. It's like, a, how many, I don't know how much they weigh. I have no idea. Huh? I have no idea, but it sounds like I would not fuck with a bear like that. It's, I don't. I f- listen to enough Joe Rogan to know to not don't fuck want animals. to be around a bear. I don't want to be about bears. Uh, <laughs> do you know? You know Joe Beasley? He was a kind. He just got attacked by a dog. He's he's a tattoo artist. Now he can't fucking tattoo. This happened today. He just posted I have right no there. Idea. Fucking like, do uh, you don't own pit bulls or anything? Do you? I want a pit bull. Why? I want a baby blue pit bull. Yeah. But don't they kill people? No, people kill people. And pit bulls kill other. This fucking- guy, this pro gun maniac. Is about to talk to me about this shit. No, people kill people. Yeah, pit bulls. No, people. You can't oh, people. look at the guns there. A pit bull is a reflection of its owner. That's all I'm saying. I have it in my head. I don't know if it's right that all pit bulls, no matter how you raise them, could turn on you. If is this is this a false narrative I'm pushing? Like, no. Uh, I listen. Who knows, bro? I want a pit. I want a pity. Well, I did have a Rottweiler. I want a pity. I want a tiny little pity. Lobo. Lobo was a Rottweiler. That's the original dog. And then we oh. had to get rid of him because he bit like three people. <laughs> well, I mean, you got to be. Yeah. Well, RIP. You know, because they're, they have, they're aggressive. They have like whatever qualities. I mean, I would love a dog. I just don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have patience right now. You know, it's like <laughs> my girl keeps wanting to get a dog and I'm like, slow down. Shit. Hey, so uh, what's that Gorlack lady? Uh, was that is that a chick? Is that her name? Gorlack? She was on some podcast. I don't know what it's called. And she looks like she's like 400 pounds. The uh, sex. You shared something uh, with that. Who is that bitch? I don't know. They. Oh, it's uh, a they? I don't or know. Th- they, them? It's a, it's a, a trans woman that uh, was part of the whatever podcast. She looks like one of them X-Men and, characters. Uh, the, the villain. There, there's been some funny memes because she's very positive about who she is and confident in who she is. But she's a little diluted and, and in denial about certain things. But that's fine. And it just was a clip that I thought was very funny because she's like, I could fuck. What's her? Is her name Gorlack or no? Or was that know. like a nickname she got? I have no idea. What, what, what's the name of that podcast? I think it's called the Whatever Podcast. What, uh, put Gorlack, whatever podcast. I don't know if maybe that's a, that's a, a name that got. Uh, let's see. What's happening? What is it called? What's happening? The Whatever Podcast. Whatever Podcast. What is that? Is that like they try to put hoes on and ho shame or? I just mean seeing. Uh, oh, this thing. Yeah, oh my, I, I, the big, the big thing. You know which one I'm talking the big about, Gorlock. I, I saw somebody do a job of the hut edit. The yeah, the job of the one was a little too much. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hi. I'm oh damn. I'm 23. That one. I go to UCSB and I also bartend. I think she's gonna bang one of the dudes. Anyways. <laughs> 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 her, so her name is Gorlock the Destroyer. I don't know, but that shit is fucking hilarious. I don't know who that person is. God bless him. I'm so confused, uh, dude. What is this podcast? What is it about? Do you know anything th- about this? This podcast apparently sits down with uh, with young women and tries to tell them not to be whores. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the gist of it. Uh, it, ha- it has some entertainment value to it, but it's not necessarily uh, uh, the best Why advice. do they have two Game Boy Colors this and a Fight Club? This Oh, it's oh, on the wow. picture. Pic- yeah, they have no. <laughs> and th- is that a real voice? Or <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, if you put on the original one, it's it's just her introducing herself and saying that she can have whatever dude she wants. Like, because uh, like, uh, she could physically attack him she, and rape him? You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know. Probably, she, dude. She's very confident in herself, so, you know. Yeah, look how big she is. I'd be confident, too. Yeah. She could hold me down and fucking. What am I going to do about it? Unless if I don't got my Glock uh, on me, Gorlack is going to fucking. <laughs> Have her way I with you. I am Gorlock. <laughs> Listen, uh, big ups to them. You know, I don't, I don't like my hairline, and I don't even want to do this. And she out there like that, so, you know. So, <laughs> we call that the Lizzo effect. I wasn't. Everybody it. out here confident as fuck now. Fine. Because there's somebody. You know why she's confident? Uh, because uh, I was in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Right, and this Say is, less. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I've told this before on the podcast. This is where I learned like motherfuckers will fuck anything. And I, before this moment, I was like, it, you know, I didn't think it was real. And yeah. then there was, I, we were in this room, and there was this big, there was this black Gorlack there, big, <laughs> motherfucking big, like the size of this fucking background. Gorlack. <laughs> yeah. And then I remember I was before I went, to, I went to go, I was gonna sleep in the couch because my friend was gonna smash the girl he went to see. 
And then I was like, the girl I wanted to see fucking dipped out. Mm -hmm. She gone. Yeah, she gone. There's some. She had to drive some guy home and he got drunk or but the, the old guy it was a DUI. I don't know. It was a whole mess. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm going to bed. It's done. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to. The night's over. And I remember when I was walking by the bathroom, I had to go to the bathroom. I saw the Gorlack oh, in the bedroom on the bed. And she no. was taking up like all the bed. And I was like, oh. it was her friend. And I was like, okay. But then one of the normal looking dudes, maybe just normal looking dude, not skinny, just a normal looking white dude. I saw go into that Gorlack room Oof. and close the door. And I was like, no. Ah, 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 ah. And that's when I realized motherfuckers will fuck anything. I think, like, and then never. Well, maybe he's into it. And maybe that's his thing. Maybe yeah. he's fucking. With, I mean, listen, everybody got a fucking. Uh, I didn't know that, though, until that moment. I mean, yeah. You, yeah, there's moments where you're like. Uh, there's something for everybody here. <laughs> there's something there's for something, everybody. There's a lot. There's, there's a lot something for, for everybody here. You know, I know. I saw like some interview. I think it was like a Vice thing. Some some big girl. Uh, she gets thousands. And I like big bitches. She, she gets Women. thousands of dollars to sit on dudes. She gets paid thousands of dollars, like to just sit on a dude. They go to a hotel and she just like sits on them and smashes them and they love it, and they get off on it. She doesn't have sex. Do you have them. a weird fetish or no? No. I don't think I think everything of mine is within the normal context of looking at titties and bitches. Those are white dudes, right? No offense, Justin, you're white, but what? that's a white dudes get like getting sit on, right? I, mean, I guess it's a variety. Well, I'm pretty sure everybody's got a weird thing. I feel uh, white dudes got some weird, <laughs> fucking. I feel every, bad about uh, what I'm, we did or what I did or what my dad did. But you know what? My friends are dominatrix, and there's a lot of re real, 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 real rich black dudes that that feel bad about it, and and that they want to get abused for it. They feel bad for just, making money. They just feel some. They have their own guilt, right? Kind of a thing going on. Everybody has something going on that they need to express, and if it's sexually, then bon voyage. Oh my know? god, maybe that's why I always wanted to kind of uh, hire a hooker and have her wear crutches and kind of push her, but she'd be, <laughs> make sure she was okay with it. Because when I was in grammar school, sure, if she's okay with it. And you have a clear consent. Yeah, yeah. I had a time like um, you know, I'm not gonna hurt her or anything like nah. that. Maybe it wore this carpet. But uh, yeah, <laughs> but then no, there was this uh, wheelchair kid, and we mm -hmm. were pen pals, and I got pen pal with the wheelchair kid, and we he wrote the letter that I wrote, and he was super excited. I was like, all right. Then it was my turn to write it. I was like, all right, write it, and then procrastinating as motherfucker. I was like, all right, I'll write it tomorrow, yeah. oh later, and it would turn into I never wrote him back. So like it broke my heart that this motherfucking wheelchair kid I was like, oh, I have a friend now, and I never wrote him, and it bothered me for you. Like mm -hmm. I tried to find it. So now it's like, I always had it. It went away, it's, but that's right. one of the things where it's like, maybe that's why I wanted to fucking. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like when you're fucking, you know, when you're driving, you see a dude in a bicycle, don't, like with the helmet. Like I want to, want to hit him maybe or push him off. Does that mean? Uh, that's, I think that's I, I, as I long mean, as he's not yeah, hurt. There's occasion times where I'm like, I could take him out. That make me feel good for a second, and then I go to jail. No, that's not good. But I don't if it would feel good if it's like if it's not like he wouldn't be really being hurt and like in this weird vacuum bubble in my head where nobody gets hurt. Yeah, I don't I like do it. it. Uh, I don't really have anything. I think it'd be uh, the idea of like meeting a stranger and not having a conversation would be dope. But that's like more fantasy, not fetish. What do you mean? Oh, like just like you're at like like you're at a fancy little art gallery, right? And you catch each other from across the room. You're probably with different people, and you have like this eye contact thing. And then she just does like this like shush thing and then points to dude and you do the shush thing you point to your girl and then you just like find a way to conversate without words and then i don't know the idea of that is fucking cool you know what's funny there's a lot of, not a lot of girls but i knew a few girls that would go on the the fetish site what is it called fet fet ah, fet life i think it's called fet life yeah and then they would do this thing where they would meet dudes on fet life they'd go uh, I don't know if the dude would show up with a mask. They leave the door open. The dude would come and fuck them, and they'd leave. They never know who it was. That that was a thing. I yeah, mean, yeah, some girls that yeah. Did that. I've heard girls fantasizing of just being covered up and getting fucked and going. You know, everybody's got a weird. You know, everybody's got like a thing you feel shamed about. You shouldn't. It's fine as long as it's within adult content. Yeah, within you know? within reason. Within right? reason, consent. No one's getting hurt, and everybody's cool with it. It's fine. Um, what did I write here? Uh, oh, I just found out somebody sucks dick. So, okay, yeah, they kind of weird me. Somebody I knew, I just found out they they suck dick. And if I knew ahead of time, I think it'd be it was a guy, right? And okay. I didn't know he was doing this oh. undercover. Okay. So then it was more like if I knew the whole time, I think I'd be okay with it. But it's like now I feel like if it was even something else, I feel like you're disingenuous. Like I was gonna play golf with you, and mm. you're secretly 
sucking this guy's dick on the down low. You never told me. I don't know how you feel about that. But I, I mean, going. I don't. I don't think I give a shit. I really don't. I've had gay friends that hit on me. But he's gay. You know he's gay. And he's hitting on you. Yeah. This guy's never. He he still doesn't know that I know. I just found out. I mean, it is what it is. It's up to you. You decide what you want to do with that information. I don't think it's worth my energy to give a fuck. If you're like, oh, is he being deceitful? Is he lying? No, it is what it is, bro. Even if he is, you're like, whatever. He's been good to me. You know what I'm saying? Like at the end, has he? Has he? Yeah. It makes you think about some other moments, but it's like you fucking. I think you gotta. Did you cheat at golf? You know what I mean? Like uh, when we fucking played. Like now I'm like when. What were you well, doing you, with your but, ball? but you could understand the difference between keeping something that something like that hidden within the context of is he Latino? Yeah. Yeah. Being Latino, raised in that culture, raised in that system, Catholic probably, and then yeah, yeah. trying to shave a few swings off your fucking score, you know what I'm saying? Like uh, it's one has a huge cultural impact. The other one's just like you're kind of a con I fucking hate fucking cheaters. And yeah, yeah. golf, golf. Like that's all I've been thinking about. Like I was even gonna I was like, man, maybe I was going to just do golf podcasts for the summer because that's all. That's Go ahead. I'm sure mind. there's a fucking audience for that, but you will never catch me fucking dead. Uh, listening to people talk about golf. Get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> Listen, I love, I love swimming, right? That's like my nerd sport. That's like what I'm into. Like, not, if you had do you like a, watch stuff on swimming? Or I no? love everything about swimming. I watch NCAAs. I watch uh, World Championships. I watch Pan Packs. I watch the Euros. I don't give a fuck. I watch it because I'm like... I can make a lot of money betting on this shit in the Olympics because no one pays attention Nobody to knows it, the and real I know lines. the odds, and I know who's hot, and I know who's not, and I missed out on making like six grand at the last Olympics because I just couldn't push the button. But I was like, oh, I fucking know. What happened to it? You had have an Android or? No, it's just that I couldn't fucking pull the trigger. I didn't. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't like a technical thing. No, it's it like, was just like my fear. But I'm like, I, I'm, I was telling like people, I was like, this team is ranked third, but I think they're going to win by a significant margin that they did. And uh, anyway, so like I love swimming, but I would never listen to like a swimming podcast. And, like, you know what I'm saying? No. Like, nah, no, why would I? I don't give. That's all I've been listening to. Listen, because I just know who's doing what, and I can read comments. And just I'm like, that's enough. Like I don't need any more. You know, like I know it's kind of like a dorky thing, but I'm not here to like talk about in season stuff. I'm like, I'm just looking for championships. Championships tell you everything. You know, this guy's won the last three. Then chances are this motherfucker is coming in hot. Current, but do you like fucking the history of swimming? Or like me, I was watching something about this golf course called Oakmont that this dude, yeah. white dude, probably racist, put together, and it was like that. <clears throat> he was like he tried to make it the hardest course he. Yeah, can. golf's a little more interesting though. Golf, golf, you just have because a pool. of the sport, the way that it's cultivated, just kind of a little bit like baseball. Every field is different. Every field is every different. every course is different. You have to have different skill sets. You have to have a, every a, condition. You have to know where you're at. You can play like a golf course ten times and each time play it differently. They you move know the what pin I'm saying? Every time. Yeah, there's a whole different world going. Swimming is just like you got fifty meters or twenty five, depending where you're at. Uh, and you just have to beat this time or touch the wall first, whatever the case is. It's, it's kind of very simple. But since I swam and I know the intricacies and technical shit, for me, it's very entertaining because I don't think anyone else gives a fuck. How good were you? I was decent. Okay. I was decent in high school. I uh, I think I partied a little too much and I got sick and then I lost muscle. So senior year, I couldn't. I was ranked top 10 in uh, my event. And then at state, I, I kind of fucking choked. But I really got third. I choked because I was the anchor and... I got What's the anchor? I was the last one on the on the relay. Oh. And then um, I really missed my wall, and I went from first to third on the last lap. It was fucking brutal. But you know what? We did our best, and we it was the most points our team ever scored. Blah, did blah, you blah. shave? Yeah, I was shaved. Had, Everything? I had to tell. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. It was it, awesome. Is that, does everybody have to shave, or uh, uh, swim caps help? Uh, you know no? what? Chimes have changed. Technology's changed. Everything's changed. Um, so people still shave. Phelps had hair, right? Yeah, yeah but, but, but he shaved down. Right. So if you look at the video, he's completely shaved. Uh, but he keeps his, his hair because you can wear a cap. But for me, caps were uncomfortable. And I would just race in my bald head. It was awesome. I loved it. <coughs> I felt so good. I felt so Ah, it's, you missed that feeling. You missed that feeling. So you were completely bald? Yeah, I was completely bald. And I had these little fucking Swedish goggles. These little things what, that just go over your eyes. What were the best ones? Because I would just buy. Swedish. What? But sweet, if you were a competitor, the sweets were the best. What was the company? Because what's the one it's I. It's called I, Swedish. Okay. Swedish uh, goggles. They were just these little, just little plastic ones. They came in different colors, but they fit your eyeballs perfectly. You can just tie them to the right amount, and that was it. They wouldn't fog up, really. 
Um, everybody else had like the Nikes and Speedos, but I'm like the sweetest Speedo, one. Speedo, that's what I'm thinking of. I'm like the sweet. And then in summer, when you would train outside, you have the reflective one, so the sun would just bounce off, and that was it. It was, uh, dude. I love the sport. It's Who were the two? Is sport. it Phelps and uh, what's his name? For Who's what? Caitlin now? Were they, were they the two best swimmers? For the girls, is Ledecky. I don't even heard of her. Katie Ledecky. Then for the men, it's Phelps and what's his was name? Was Phelps, and then it was Caleb Dressel. Caleb Dressel won like five gold medals in the last Olympics. Yeah. Why don't you make money there's, off of this? There's there's this there's this French dude named Leon Marchand that has broken all of Phelps's records. He's from France, so his so his uh there's Michael no cheating. Phelps, no, Michael Phelps's American records are safe, but uh, the other dudes just fucking going. And there's one uh, Michael Phelps record left. It's the 400 individual medley in meters, Olympic meters, 50 meters, which is, I believe is a 404 or a 4039, something like that. It's the hardest record of all time. It's minutes. Yeah, four minutes and four seconds, four minutes, three seconds and change. Um, and everyone believes Leon's on pace to break it. And it's the hardest record uh, like in my opinion that was my event and i'm like that's the hardest record to break and i think leon's going to destroy it when summer. is the next olympics next where's summer. it where's uh, it at in france oh in his home fucking in town. his hometown it's gonna be sick it's gonna be leon everywhere he's gonna be the new mike and then we have caleb dressel on the american side who's gonna try to carry the flag for us but his records we'll see what happens but leon's if he gets that 4 am record it's going to be all him you never coach or you never want to coach i coach i coach for like six years <laughs> 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 I coach uh, throughout college, and then my buddy has a team here in Chicago. And you and coach was, still? And I was an age group uh, coach there for a season. It was awesome. I love yelling at 10-year-olds to uh, fucking kick and put their heads down. It's fucking great. <laughs> I don't do it now because I do comedy, but uh, I didn't. But if you didn't, you would coach. I coached through college. Uh, it was my job. And it was fucking great. I love the kids. I love to, to challenge them, and I love the I did the sport of swimming. is fucking cool. It's, it gave me How'd my How'd you get life. into it? You were like, fuck it. Uh, I was a fucking ADD kid. And then uh, my sister was on the swim team because she was real good. Somebody saw her in her pool. They're like, put her on the team. And they did. Mirala. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, it was the local YMCA in Logan Square. And then my uh, my family threw me in the pool. And then I came home tired. I was asleep. And they're like, more of that shit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they're yeah, like, more dude. of that shit. I was doing karate and swimming at the same time. So you're uh, rambunctious. Not rambunctious. I was just high wild. energy. I, was, yeah, well, I got kicked off the team my first year. Why? Uh, Cause I wouldn't swim. I would just run around the pool deck and like throw the kickboard on the pool and try to surf it. <laughs> How old were you? I was like six. Seven, oh, okay, you know. okay. No, you weren't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a maniac. I was a fucking <laughs> wild child. And then I figured out if I can like t touch the wall before other people, that I would like get some people to like congratulate me, and I get like free shit, free slices of pizza. His meats would be like, if you win your heat, you get a free slice of pizza. And I was like, I love pizza. I was a fat kid and I was winning. It was awesome. And then I went to high school, and then I went to college for it. Oh, you were fat? I was fat, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fat again. I was, I was fat as a swimmer, and my coach would pull me aside. She's like, what the fuck are you eating? And I was like, uh, my mom cooks fried chicken. <laughs> I was like, Puerto Rican rice. We got nachos and tacos on Thursdays or whatever. And she was like, dude, you got to eat like pancakes and chicken breasts. And I was like. Pancakes? That was back in the day, right? That was back in the day. And they were like, you, you need, need, your you, carb need load. You, need, you need the carbs to, like, yeah, to get through a swim workout. You need. You could like eat a fucking bowl of pasta before workout and you'd be done with it by the end. It's yeah, swimming and wrestling, right? I think we're like swimming, wrestling, and I would say probably like cross country would burn the amount the same. I think more calories are burned as a swim. I was just canning with some cross country kid. It was funny because it was two kids, real quick, and you could tell one of them was super sharp getting the ball. The other one was like, it was like, man, I was thinking like, was I me? Was I that fucking slow? Because I remember my dad would not yell yeah. at me a lot, but it was like, I pero lo quiero pero ayer and blah blah yeah. blah. And I was like, was I this fucking kid? Because he was like. Uh, oh, the bag. And like, and the, I was like, I told him, like, this kid's ready to caddy. This one needs a little bit more training. I wish know? I would have caddied, bro. I, that's one of I those things it, that, like, my mom was, like, talking about it for, like, a summer or two. Because we would swim. I would swim over there in Lake Forest. And we'd go by these golf courses oh, and, and yeah. shit. And uh, my mom, because we were living in, in the city and not in the hood or anything. We had moved to Belmont Craig, but it was still Polish. And my mom was like, you should learn to play golf or you should work at these golf clubs. And I did. I got a job at Saddle and Cycle in the city as a lifeguard, mm -hmm. um, but I got fired. They don't have a range, but they have a golf course. They used to have a range. Oh, okay. they used to. So back in the day, back in like the eighteen late nineteen hundreds or whatever, uh, they had like eight holes, and then it got taken down to three, I think. 
And then uh, now it's just whatever it is. Yeah, because that used to be one of my customers. They don't buy shit because it's like yeah. they're golf really. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, 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 you have a range or whatever. But it's a nice place, but I got fired because I was uh, I was waking up at 5.30 to swim at Lake Forest at like 6 o'clock to 8 or whatever in the morning. And then I had to go work at like 11. Lake I Forest College. Yeah, Festival I had to drive seven. all the way there. And then I would work from like 11 to four or whatever it was and then i would go to swim practice at night and then i would go home and just absolutely crash and so after two months i would sit in the chair as a lifeguard <laughs> i would put i would put my aviators on and i would tie the umbrella i would tie the umbrella to my head and i would pass the fuck out and they knew that i was asleep because everyone cleared out from the pool for family swim mm -hmm. and i was still on the chair i was on the chair for two <laughs> <laughs> I was on the chair for two more hours, just sitting there with my mouth open because the umbrella pulled me back and I was just drooling like, uh, and I woke up because one of the parents poured cold water on my back. Damn. And uh, it was because it's poshy, it's saddle and cycle. You know, I met a lot of Bears players and uh, actors and shit. And um, they're like, we can't risk you passing the fuck out on the chair. And they're like, we know you do swimming or whatever. And there, and you play water polo. It was I play water polo after swim practice? It was insane. And they were like, "Just go do that. Go do that. <laughs> go, just go do that." <laughs> and uh, I remember this one dude, the guy that fired me at Saddle and Cycle. I don't know if this was racist, but he was just like, "You know, you're really ruining a good opportunity, Roberto, because you know these are good people. These are really good people, and like maybe one day you're gonna want a job from these people." <laughs> 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 you're gonna want to work from them and and this was a good place for you to network and i'm like bitch what if i am one of these people you know what I'm, like he didn't give me the opportunity but the people <clears throat> become the people because you know they have their networking community like this guy knows this guy because it's like that whole, when i got older that i realized like that who you know thing i didn't think about it in college but when i got older oh, I, was I was so like, short sighted oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. i get it i get how this all yeah. works and this person like yeah, i'm at the yeah, country yeah. club and it's like oh but i was sense. never i was never ambitious like that no i, I, I never saw a corporate world uh like climbing thing and then being like in a selective group you know we're latino we raised latino like the the well our version of that is having the big house with the big yard where the entire family comes over and just hangs you know what i'm saying you want your theo your cousin to come to swing by and just like kick it you're barbecuing in the back and that's that's our country club like this shit about going somewhere with all these private who stanks I don't think that's uh, that's never in my future. Hey, quick question uh, before I leave the the lifeguard. What is this thing? When I go to the pool, the lifeguards do this. They're like, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. What the fuck is that? They're like, what is it? They're scanning the ropes. Okay, so okay, and they have to the head nod is part of the training, or do you? No, you just fucking figure it out. My pool was small because so I looked and I saw the lifeguards. They were all doing this, and I was like, what the fuck is this cult? What's going on here? And freaking out. Where was a it? Bit. This was in like the water place in Gurney, but then I saw it somewhere else, or maybe it was in Gurney. Yeah, one. I don't know. They were all different. I private country club. My sister did uh, the beaches in the summer. She worked at Fox. They watch. And then all my friends worked at Oak Street and um, and North Ave. They were all lifeguards there in the summer. Okay, this will be out in a few weeks. Plugs. Uh, any plugs you want to do? Social media shows. Yeah, blah, blah, follow blah. me. Tito's Tales. On the Instagrams, that's where I post my dates and shit coming up. Follow me. Support me. I'm going to fucking the Mothership, Comedy Mothership, May 28th in fucking Austin, Texas. I'm taking on some fucking dude. Nobody. Some fucking guy. I'm going to destroy him, baby. Okay, follow the so, yeah, social media. Follow the opening podcast, Instagram, follow the Patreon. Uh, I put up some episodes that I actually deleted and took off the internet uh, because I did drugs with somebody that... Oscar said she wasn't canceled, but I thought she was. But I canceled. I blocked her on everything. It's on the Patreon. I'll tell you oh, afterwards. Oh, is it fucking... I won't say the name. So-and-so's baby mama? Yeah. Oh, okay. And I was like, I found the files. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I was like, you know what? I need to really... Let me... So there's the, there's the Molly one and the Mushroom one just came out on the Patreon. So they'll be out there for now. But as long as like my girl doesn't get on the Patreon, I'll take that shit off real quick. But uh, yeah, Instagram, TikTok, follow the Patreon, $3 a month, starting tier, support... Uh, I think that's it. Okay. Love on it. Love on it. It's the love on it.